Good morning, Tensor friends. When I should have been sleeping this morning, I was laying there thinking about co-vectors. I know, a good life, right? And something dawned on me that I think is very interesting. Uh, in all my old books, when they had a vector defined as a linear combination of its components and its basis, the vectors, they just call that a contravariant vector. It's actually not a contravariant vector. It's a vector with contravariant components. But now they just call it a vector. Then when you see it written in a linear combination like this, they call that a covariant the vector, which once again, it's not a covariant vector. It's a vector expressed with covariant comp components. Now they just call it a covector. And then you got this math speak that vectors live in a vector space and covectors live in a dual vector space. And I thought, you know what? I've seen this before. And I started thinking about where, and it took me way back. <clears throat> so I'll make this brief because no one wants to listen to an old man drone on about his glory days. And I went back and checked this uh, diagram from Eigen Chris, which shows a vector of, of piercing planes. So these planes are covectors and this is a vector uh, and I'll leave a link in the in the description he has a a very good uh, playlist on vector calculus and I'll leave a link to, to that so let's go back way back in time to my first job I spent my entire career in the semiconductor industry my very first job was operating a molecular beam epitaxy, the system. Uh, I understand they always give this job to the rookies because it's a little bit dangerous <laughs> and they don't care if they lose them, I guess. But it was really a fascinating field to work in. So what you have here is an ultra high vacuum, the chamber, it's like 10 to the minus 10, the tor. Very, very low vacuum. Uh, you have a, and in this case, we are doing basic research on Gallimard Snide, the semiconductor, a compound semiconductor. Uh, you have a, a substrate, uh, it's about uh, 600 degrees th the Celsius. And you have these effusion the cells, right? And they're pointed at this, the substrate. And so you're evaporating, in my case, the gallium and evaporating arsenic. Uh, and the reason they call it a beam is because the vacuum level is so low that the mean free path of these atoms uh, are so long. They're longer than the entire chamber, so they don't interfere with each other. So they impinge on the substrate without inducing uh, collisions to themselves. And inside this uh, chamber, I had a reflective high energy electron diffraction gun. And I, if I remember right, is about 15 keV, and it's at a very sh the shallow angle, and it's piercing just like two lattices down. It's very shallow angle, and it bounces off. And on this phosphor screen over here, I'd get patterns, and I would say, oh, this pattern means uh, such and such about the growth of gallium arsenic. Have I got enough arsenic? Do I not have enough arsenic? Have I removed the native oxide from the, the substrate? All kinds of things you can learn from these read the patterns, right? And what dawned on me after looking at Ike and Chris's, uh, the diagrams again, is that I've seen this before. And remember, back in the day, we didn't have the internet. So when you wanted to know something, you went to the library or you had a book or you asked uh, somebody. And I worked with a fellow who is probably the smartest person I've ever personally known. He was a real live Sheldon the Cooper. I'm not kidding. He was wicked smart and he was pretty eccentric too. So I was asking him about these read the patterns and he started talking about K space. And I said, whoa, <laughs> okay, I've seen that in a textbook, but let's talk about what it is. Well, the way he described it, and I, I just found this on the internet, I, I don't know what his original, the drawing was, but he's showing these electron beams as vectors piercing planes. And I said, oh, I've seen that before. So I asked Google, is K space considered a dual vector space? Boom. Yes. <laughs> 
<clears throat> in the context of physics and crystallography, K space is considered a dual vector space, meaning it represents the space of reciprocal wave vectors, which is mathematically dual to the real space where physical objects reside. So those patterns I was seeing on the screen from the read, uh, those patterns, they interpret uh, theoretically to come from the reciprocal space, which is the same thing as a dual space. So they're co-vectors. I just thought that was so amazing. Uh, and they, uh, they calculate that using a Fourier. The transform is a mathematical operation that connects real space to K-space, allowing you to analyze spatial frequencies within a system. In crystallography, the reciprocal lattice, which is this is that the dual the space, which is a lattice of points in K-space, represents the dual of the crystal's real space lattice. So isn't that just so cool you can't stand it? Here is a real-life example of co-vectors. I love it. All right, see you later.